three, two. Hey, this is Dr. Letitia Wright, and I've got a very special interview for you today. We are actually in the home of Mr. Michael Gerber. That's right. If you know about the E-Myth and the other books, the E-Myth Manager, the E-Myth Revisited, the E-Myth Physician, <laughs> the E-Myth Contractor, E-Myth Mastery, which is just the, the best book you need to have for your business. It needs to be your just your resource book. And one of the newer books he has is Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. And Mr. Gerber has really brought to entrepreneurs for the first time the thought that any entrepreneur can actually systematize their business so that it can be successful, how to do it, and how to make it work for you. So thank you for being in the right place. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> so this is kind of exciting for me. Uh, number one, I get to come to his house. Um, number two, <laughs> number two, I really get to talk with you one on one and find out a little bit more about how the E Myth came about, how you saw the need that that entrepreneurs had. Wonderful. Well, it's a long story, but I'll I'll keep it short. Okay. <laughs> um, it actually started 35 years ago, and a very close friend of mine owned a small advertising agency um, in Silicon Valley. Um, his clients were high tech companies. Uh, he had been a tech writer, and then they asked him, would you write this, would you write that, would you do this, would you do that? So tech writer to advertising agency uh, president um, in a relatively short period of time. In any case, one of his clients was having a problem. He couldn't convert the leads that my friend's ad agency was creating into sales. So he said to me, Michael, would you come and visit this client? And I said, why would I do that? <laughs> he said, well, first of all, because I asked you. He said, second of all, because I think you can help him. And I said, Ace, that's my friend's name. He happens to be now my brother-in-law. Um, Ace, I, I don't know anything about business, and I didn't. And um, I certainly don't know anything about high tech, and I didn't, and I don't. And I have no idea how I can help him. And he said, don't worry. You know, more than enough. All I need you to do is just talk to him. And so I did. And I started with the assumption that, uh, one, I didn't know anything about business because I knew that was true. And two, he did because he owned one. So the only thing I could do was to tell him that I didn't know anything and say, so what would you like to talk about? And he said, well, what do you know about my business? And I said, nothing. And he said, well, what do you know about my products? And I said, less than that. And he said, so how can you help me? And I said, I haven't a clue. But Ace thinks I can. Let's see what happens. We've got an hour to kill. And in that hour, uh, everything was reborn. Truly, in that hour, I discovered that I did know something about business. I know that selling is a system. And I knew that because I was successful at selling encyclopedias. And I knew about systems because I was successful at becoming a master of the saxophone. And I knew about um, all of these things that one would think have absolutely no relationship whatsoever with business that I had been learning steadfastly um, up to that point in time in my life. And understand, I was now 38 years old, so I wasn't a kid. And I was a wandering Jew. I was looking for my... Truth. I was looking for the holy grail, you might say. Okay. <laughs> In any case, I found it. And I suddenly discovered that this man, who was as brilliant as any man I've ever met, absolutely understood technology. He absolutely understood what his product was supposed to do. He absolutely understood the tech world, but he didn't understand business. And he didn't understand that selling is a system. So when I told him that his problem was that he didn't have a selling system, and he didn't, and that he could teach a kid to sell his product, in fact, I could, and I don't know anything about his product, he said, bull. How could you possibly do that? And I said, well, give me a couple of weeks and I'll show you. And he did. And here we are. Because that led into client number two, client number three, client number five, client number 12. And I kept on developing for ACE's ad agency what I then called business development clients. 
In fact, what I learned is that nobody wanted advertising. Mm. What they wanted was sales. Yes. Right? Ace was in the wrong business. He didn't know that because Ace was a tech writer who became a copywriter, who became an advertising agency executive. He knew that, but he didn't understand business. And what I discovered, Letitia, is that nobody understood business. Nobody. Every single business I would walk into was suffering from the same problem. And I asked myself, what's wrong with this picture? How could it be possible that all of these people who have started businesses hadn't a clue what they were doing. And I discovered the secret. And the secret, not the secret, <laughs> but the secret is very, very simple. Um, the people who started businesses that I was meeting day after day after day after day, suddenly like a kid in a candy shop, because I had the secret, <laughs> because I absolutely understood it, they were technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. They weren't entrepreneurs. Yes. They truly didn't understand what an entrepreneur is. And then I walked into McDonald's and it happened. And the true epiphany that shaped the rest of my life, that wrote the nine books, that created the world's largest small business development firm, Emith Worldwide, that created the dreaming room that I've talked to you about, that created all of the ventures that I've created over the past 30 years, all of that comes from understanding one absolutely irrefutable thing that you don't go to work in your business, you go to work on your business and you invent a business that works without you, just like Ray Kroc did, mm -hmm. just like Michael Dell did, just like Tom Watson did at IBM, just like Steve Jobs did, just like Bill Gates did and on and on and on and on. And that's what we learn to teach entrepreneurs and small business owners. And that's how I'm sitting here with you today. Very good. Now what you said, uh, entrepreneurs, the definition of an entrepreneur. We don't want to create a business that just depends on us working on it because it's just the job, right? Yeah, well, we don't want to create a business that depends upon us. I don't want to create a business in which I'm the coach. I don't want to create a, a, a consulting business in which I'm the consultant. I don't want to create a video production company in which I'm the video producer. I don't want to do that because there's no scale to it. Because when I stop doing it, I'm out of business. When I don't go to work, um, it doesn't work. And that's the problem with 99% of all the businesses who are listening to us right now. The business depends upon the guy, the woman who goes to work every day. And they have no clue that that is exactly the opposite of what they should be doing. So what I discovered is the great companies that have ever been created truly are created from an entrepreneurial perspective that the system is the solution. The system is the solution provided of course that there's a large enough dream, a large enough vision, a large enough purpose and a, an extraordinary mission that enables you to invent a turnkey capability that you can scale. That means you can replicate it at will. That means you can create 30,000 stores and you can have kids running those stores and those stores deliver again and again and again and again exactly what you expected them to do and exactly what the consumer expected to buy because they build a brand. And so this is all about branding. It's all about systems, it's all about systems thinking, it's all about true entrepreneurship. Very good, that's cool. Now, you went through, you created this whole big e myth thing. I mean, it was yes. huge, huge, huge. It still is huge because people still need that. Hello, you guys need to know systems. Growing every day. <laughs> right. But you tell me a story about you retired and then you came up with the dreaming room. So would you share that with me? Well, the, the truth is I'd never retired. Okay. Uh, and that is, uh, in my mind, in my lexicon, that's the worst thing anybody could ever say okay. I did. <laughs> I, I, I have okay. never retired. Okay. The truth is I brought in a CEO to run my company and to grow it. Okay. Because I came face to face with the reality that for years, all I've been is a manager doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy. I have not truly um, lived the spirit of the entrepreneur within me who created Emith Worldwide in the beginning. So all I'm doing is working on it, working on it, working on it, working on it, working in it, working in it, working in it, even though 
in an enlightened fashion. I wasn't working with clients. I wasn't the coach. I wasn't the marketing guy. I wasn't the operations guy, et cetera, and so forth. Still, something incredibly important was missing in my own company. And I came to the realization if the company was going to truly realize what it needed to do, I had to bring in a guy to do it. And I brought in a guy to do it. So now I'm sitting on the outside while he's sitting on the inside, and he didn't want to talk to me at all. Because all I was saying, you know, I'd say, hey, but what about, hey, but what about, hey, but what about, he said, go away. Go away. That's what he did, said, go away. So he told me to go away about 47 times, and then I did. Now what? So my mother, God bless her, um, she passed away last year at 96. Um, I was talking with mom. And in fact, I write about this in Awakening the Entrepreneur Within, which is my last book. And I was telling her my tale of woe. I said, Mom, now what? You know, I'm 69 years old. I created a great company, and I'm on the street. Now, understand, <laughs> on the really street. On a really good street. Yeah, a really, really good street. You know, and any, anybody else would say, play golf, stupid. You know, um, chase around. Do whatever you're going to do. But I was lost, literally lost, because all the juice was gone. And I needed to find the juice. And um, I decided that I was going to create something new. And so I asked myself the question, um, what would I do? And my mother said to me, Michael, whatever you can see, because I've never known anybody in my life who's as creative as you, just let go and you'll see it. And it wasn't several weeks later when I in fact saw it. And I said, the dreaming room. Because what I had failed to do at E-Myth was to begin at the beginning. Understand all of our clients at E-Myth are people that I call owners of broken businesses. So in essence, we created a company fixed broken businesses. Now because 99% of all businesses on the street are broken, yes, yours too, all broken, meaning the business doesn't work, the person who owns it works, and they're doing the wrong work, and they're reporting to a lunatic. What I had been <laughs> doing was fixing broken businesses. That, that, that's the essence of e okay. um, But I had never addressed the startup. Okay. I had never really addressed, well, how do you start this again? And so I said, you start it with a dream. So why don't I do a dreaming room? And that's what I did. And in one of my speaking events, I invited the audience, about 600 people, uh, to come dream with me. And they said, well, what does that mean? And I said, I haven't a clue. But what I know is, if 30 of you people come and meet with me in a dreaming room for two and a half days, a miracle will happen. The miracle will happen for you, and the miracle will happen for me. Because I know that within me, there is someone who knows how to dream. And I believe with everything I've got that within you, there is somebody who is dying to do that too. And yet, we never do it. And so I said, come dream with me. And 35 people did. And that was in December of 2005. And that weekend was a weekend I had never done before, it was an experience I had never had before. It called upon skills and capability I never knew I possessed. And it was astonishing, absolutely astonishing. And it was astonishing, I can say this for every single person who came to that room, because I began to develop the picture of what an entrepreneur really is. I began to develop the model that I had never really developed. And I discovered the four very distinct personalities within an entrepreneur, the dreamer, the thinker, the storyteller, and the leader, and the relationship between the four. The dreamer has a dream, the thinker has a vision, the storyteller has a purpose, and the leader has a mission. Mm. Those four and how they work together then created my last book, Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. And anybody who has a question about why their business is stuck, why their business isn't making it, why their life feels like they put it on pause, mm -hmm. has to read that book. Because to me, that is the first book I should have written. Mm -hmm. That's the book I should have written.